In the previous video, we told about these wire shelves in our master closet and how we did not like the function of them at all. We detailed what all we were gonna do with it and emptied it and did total demolition on the closet. I got one cut of mud on the wall yesterday and I'm gonna go through and sand it with 120. I am just trying to see what spots need recoating again because inevitably, usually you need two coats. So I'm just gonna put this on a time lapse, go through and sand all this stuff down so that we can see what else we need to patch. Headed to get my friend's covered trailer because there was not supposed to be any rain on the radar and I don't even see any, but it's misting and the truck's all wet and I can't have a bunch of plywood that's expensive get ruined. So I'm gonna go pick that up, go grab a bunch of plywood. So hopefully we can get started on the platforms in just a little while and start building out this closet. Let's go. As you can see, some of this plywood has a little bit of damage on a couple of the corners. Because of that, I got them to knock the price basically in half, and I figured if I'm cutting some strips or some different pieces out of it to make drawers, I can cut around this stuff and save a serious amount of money. We have been reviewing our cheat sheet where all of our measurements and just kind of our initial planning started out. And I'm glad we did because we figured out we needed a little bit deeper cabinets for the hanging clothes. We're gonna end up being at 24 inches off of the wall, which is standard uh, versus 20 is what we were originally thinking. Not a big deal, we can still get all of that on both sides out of one sheet like we were planning. We were just going through and making sure all of that. We brought a hamper in here to kind of see how wide we wanted to make that. Anyway, now we're gonna start breaking down plywood and building a platform to set all of this on, basically like a toe kick, but we're doing a smooth front, so it'll make sense later. I'm gonna go out in the driveway and rip some stuff down with the track saw. I'll probably be using the table saw some, and we'll start laying this down. It's exciting. 96, and another uh, two feet will be right there, which is right where we're wanting to be. This edge looks decent. I'm gonna cut a scrap at that width so that I can always put it back there that same, same amount. For the rest of the platform frame, I'm going to use two by fours. I don't have my joiner up and running, so these aren't too bad, they just have a, a bow to them. So I'm gonna rip a straight side on the track saw, and then I can take them back to the table saw and, and rip the other edge at two inches like we need, and that'll be good and strong. I haven't moved my fence yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and rip these two by fours the same as I did my side pieces for that platform. That way everything will be uniform. The thing is so bowed. That one will get two 24 inch sections. Change of plans. I don't have any more good two by fours that aren't twisted. So I found a couple pieces of just leftover scrap plywood. Had this kicking around the shop for a long time. The thickness of this does not matter because I'm gonna rip strips and it's gonna become the ribs for the platform.
I'm just gonna tack the actual frame together and then we'll secure it to the subfloor with some screws and I don't think it'll take long at all. Famous last words. To find how thick of this we need to be, I'm gonna use the two by four that we're using on the back and the face material that we're using for our little cleat here. Stack them together and then pull off of that to measure 24 and pull 24, okay? So that means these pieces will actually be 21 three quarters. All right. I only use the biggest square possible in the most awkward way and I get great results every time. Aren't you glad you just vacuumed? Yeah. Boom, baby. Now what I can do is just use this as my template and I'll just go through and mark on all of them uh, using this one so that I won't have any error by changing the one that I'm marking. And keep on going. I spent some time doing some layout and marking spots on the floor, trying to square up this cabinet with one or both of the walls if possible. Walls are notoriously just not square to each other, so you kind of just have to do what you can do. We already have a 12 inch spacer right here. This woodpecker square. So we can just go 12 and then nail this one in. Joe did Elizabeth. Earlier when I said famous last words, it's because this ended up taking us a lot longer than we thought. The two by fours not being straight and being very bowed and having to kind of piece together all of this stuff and attach it in a grid form. It just didn't go as quickly as I thought. Also, some of the cheap plywood that I opted for when I screwed into the edge grain of it to put it down to the floor, it just wanted to split all apart and we just had a nightmare of a time getting this secure and squared like it should be. I have now wrapped up the bases, kind of like the toe kick for all of these cabinets. Now I'm gonna get started on the first one right here in the corner, and I'm just gonna build that in my shop, mostly uh, basically three sides of the thing, and then when I get two of those built, we'll put the top cap on there to really secure it together. I ended up having to stack a bunch of these inside the house for a little while just because I was running out of room dealing with all these sheet goods. I've cut a bunch of the pieces that we need for the next part, which is assembling some of the cabinets. I'm pretty excited to finally be at that point, but we're gonna start with this largest one in the far corner and kind of build out away from the window. Uh, I'm gonna get Rebecca to help me hold because these are eight foot pieces and hopefully we can put this all together and then wrestle it upstairs. I think it'll have a better chance of just coming out better that way. Once again, Famous last words. Glue a little bit. Now we lift it back up. Come to you. Gently slide toward the table saw. There you go. Perfect. You're gonna have to keep going straight for a minute if possible. It's doing okay like this. That's gonna be tough, holding it like that. Oh gosh, this is gonna shake itself apart. What's it hitting? Go back to you if you're able to, and I'm gonna set it down. We're gonna have to go at an angle. We made a boo-boo. We can't get this thing through the doorway and it's kind of tearing itself apart. So all of the work I did down in the workshop, we're gonna have to redo. I'm going to pop a couple of the joints apart, 
Hopefully then we'll be able to get these pieces in the closet and then reassemble it. Look how it tore up that plywood. Come on in. Today was apparently the day for mistakes. I've made so many mistakes on this first cabinet, it's not even funny. Uh, the last of which was when we got it back assembled in this room, we realized that the full height would not go under this lower ceiling. So I'm having to cut it down a little bit so that by the time we cap it all with another piece of plywood, it will be just at the level that we need. Uh, luckily, I've got this track saw now and I'm just gonna rip off of both of these sides to make them equal and everything should be fine. We're back up in the closet now. I've got all of the side pieces ready for uh, putting the closet rods in. I'm going to secure them with the side, on the side with some glue and inch and a quarter brad nails. We're gonna go ahead and do that so that we can get the top shelf that goes here secured and uh, move on from there. I'll show more detail on how I made these hanger brackets in a future episode. In this episode, I'm really focusing on the construction of the cabinet carcasses and getting them all secured to the wall. So I can know where to nail. Yeah, it's pretty darn close. It's got some wobble to it, so we'll have to check it again once we put it in place. Yeah, we'll be able to work with that. That's our first section. Yep. Okay. Next. It's a lot more solid now. Back down in the shop now, and I need to make a few more cuts to build the next cabinet. I've already laid out where the base of that cabinet is going to be, then I'm going to get two more of the longer pieces that I've cut cut them down to final size and take everything upstairs, not make the same mistake by trying to assemble it down here because we can't make it up the stairs. Sweet. Well. I've got the panel, the vertical panels for the next box built. And I figured even though I'm not gonna assemble the whole thing while I'm down here in the shop and it's laying flat and easy and I'm not fighting gravity, I can go ahead and put the uh, side supports on there. So I've done a bunch of mark out layout to where that stuff needs to be, but I will end up having a two inch style that goes on the back that we secure into the studs. I don't have that cut yet, but I'm just gonna use the same material that's an off cut to make sure I'm flush here. And then I can put this one right up next to it. It's gonna be the same distance. Do the most random possible. Get it, it kind of wants to squish around, but you can kind of wiggle it and it'll settle in there. Well, I went way off the line, didn't I? That one really flat. I built out the rest of this side of the room off camera. We have already shown enough of that side and the other cabinets were pretty similar, so that's why.
We have basically completed this side of the room. They're not attached to the wall yet, but they're all built and they're in place and looking good. Now I'm turning my attention to the other side. It's a similar makeup as far as how long these cabinets will come out here before they drop down for the countertop. But we have two double hanging in this corner and then just a large bank of drawers. I've got most of the pieces cut already. I'm standing on one of them right now. I'm gonna do a little bit of layout, go ahead and put the bar hangers glued to it and secured to it. It'll just be easier that way. When we go to assemble it, our shelf will sit right on that and we'll keep going. I did the two larger cabinets also off camera and here I'm setting in place the outer cabinet. The reason I'm doing it in this order is I need to know exactly that that is going to line up with our edge pieces since our toe kick is going to be flush with the edge and with the front. Then I can pull a measurement in between those to build that center cabinet. I didn't really know what this was going to be, but I did have that outer limit that I could not go past. In hindsight, I would not do a flush toe kick again. The next time I do this, I will do an actual toe kick where it's inset. And the reason is it's nearly impossible with walls being out of square and plumb to get that cabinet front to line up exactly with your toe kick. I ended up having to do some sanding to make it look good, but just know that it doesn't work out really well. Just got done with the final one. I'm pretty happy about that. Hopefully it fits. It was pretty different at the back. Everything's plumb, but I'm guessing there's a little bit of this kind of thing with the wall and stuff. So, please, please. Oh, it's tight. It's gonna be looser at the back. Hey. Oh yeah, that's nice. I'm pretty pleased with that fit. I think that's gonna be good. There we go. Not bad. Up next, I'm going to be marking out where the studs are so that I can secure these cabinets to the walls. That's why you put stretchers underneath each of the shelves so that you have anchor points to really secure these things. We don't need these things moving around and going anywhere, but I've already marked a couple of them. I'm gonna be doing that and kind of securing them, make sure the fit is nice with each other because we're gonna be adding a strip of hardwood on all of these just to make painting easier so we don't have to putty these edges. There were a couple places in between the cabinets that had a little bit of space, so I just put a shim here and there so that when I screwed these together, they would have something to screw to. If you don't put a shim in between there, it just won't go well. I went around securing the rest of the cabinets to the studs using some long three inch screws, and then I secured the cabinets to each other using some very short screws, being very sure not to poke through the other side. All of the cabinets are now finessed and exactly where they need to be and totally secured to the wall uh, and to each other. So these things are solid now. They're tied into the studs with really long screws and everything is super solid and not going anywhere. This one was a bit tricky. For whatever reason on this wall, the studs are 24 inches on center, which is pretty unusual. And this cabinet is only 20 and it just happens to sit directly in between two of those studs. So to catch this stud right here, I had to really angle a couple of four inch long screws to reach all the way back and catch that one. 
but it worked, got it dialed in, and everything looks really good. Thanks for building with me today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Be sure to look out for the next episode coming really soon.